everybody we're back for another video jam here's the thing when a membership owner is starting to struggle so imagine you're wearing all the hats and you decide that hey i'd like to take this hat off the community like engagement management all of this you want to give to somebody else you want somebody else to wear it but there are some issues so first of all the number one thing people think about is cost oh i can't afford it i'm maybe not making enough money yet how much do you even charge like how much do you pay a community manager mm, resistance right there's a lot of barrier to entry okay and so people don't hire community managers what they do is they keep doing it themselves and maybe doing some things that are actually going to bite them in the butt later or what they do is they think to themselves you know what i'm smart i've got a va and she's pretty awesome. Like she's really efficient. She does things on time. She she follows direction really well. And she's taken so much off of my plate. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give her a task list. I'm going to take all the stuff that I no longer want to have to be doing in the community. I'm going to write that shit down. And then I'm just going to pass that over to her. I'm going to be like, you, my friend, are going to be my community moderator or my community manager, but not actually a manager. You're going to be in there taking care of the community. Yes and no, my friends. So here's the thing. If you are bringing in a VA to help support with behind the scenes admin or collecting information or things that are it's literally like a task and it's like do a do b and then you're done then yes you can use that as a first step but there will come a point when you'll expect your va to do things or you'll hope that your va will be doing things but it's just not going to happen or you'll realize that there's actually a role in life there are community managers that this is their job, okay? They are trained professionals to go in and actually take care of the community, take care of the members, the engagement, the content, the management, and also behind the scenes for you and your team. Like they're actually proactively working. So there we go. That's the word of the day. VAs follow a task list. They do what they're told to do. Community managers are proactive. They observe what's happening and they create strategies and tactics and processes to handle situations or to do things differently or to fill a need, okay? And this is the biggest difference between the two. If you're going to walk away with only one thing, it's the difference between someone being proactive and not proactive. Now, if you have a VA who is a unicorn and who is proactive and looks for things to, um, to improve and to, to add and these sort of things, then that person is probably, first of all, keep them close, keep them happy, but also you can train them and actually like expand their role to fully take on the role of community manager. So they're not just your VA that does stuff for you and does all these different things. It's like they're your community manager so that they can be trained in the psychology of it and also the, the strategy behind what you write and how you write and when you jump in and engagement and all of the things that most people take for granted with um, having a community manager. Let me check my notes. This is true, right? VAs are task oriented. They follow instructions, but they're not there to innovate. It's so true. Unless you have a unicorn, right? Now the community manager, on the other hand, they own their role. When you have a really good community manager, they are so on it that they're thinking about where can we take the community for your membership in the next couple months or even the next year. They're thinking about, here are some problems. Here's things that I've observed in the community. Here's a problem that keeps coming up. How can we improve onboarding so that this is avoided in the community, right? It's like this ecosystem. They're like this octopus that's just like pulling all the levers all at the same time. They're not checking off a list. They're juggling the interests of multiple parties, okay? So first of all, they're interacting with the members, right? The, what's the best interest for the members, their user experience, getting results? That's one. Then they're also thinking about you, 
as the business owner? How can I make the business owner's life easier? How can I reduce the amount of time and effort that they need to spend in the community or even think about the community? Then they're thinking about team members. How can they make the life of other team members easier? So can they pull information from the community and provide it to your product team? Or can they pull um, questions out of the community and give that to you or your coach so they can just answer the questions and not be sifting through a community, right? They're thinking about multiple groups of people. They're not just thinking about an isolated task. I need to get this done. This needs to get done. They're thinking about why and how and innovating and also pushing back and saying, actually, I don't think that we should be doing this because X, Y, Z. This would be better for the community. They're protecting this space. They're looking out for it. Like they're like the mother hen mother hen that's what they are they're taking care of these little chicks but they're also taking care of the nest and they're thinking of the farmer too (laughs) mistakes to avoid do you want to know i don't know i don't do you want to know the mistakes to avoid because i got them they're written down right here i could share them or i could keep them to myself i want to share it um so first of all number one let's see Hiring the wrong person. Oh, God, yeah. Don't do that. Seriously, don't just hire somebody because they're your auntie or your husband or they're this amazing member in your community and you think that they would want to make it into a job. Don't just assume that, okay? What you need to do is you need to assess them. That's right. What we did um, in the how to assess a community manager video, two videos back actually. Either way, I'll drop a link below. So yeah, you need to assess them. Don't just put somebody into a role because it's convenient, right? Like, oh, I, my VA can handle this. Maybe they can't. Or, you know, my neighbor or one of my friends is like a work at home mom and she has her own business, but she's looking for extra work on the side. That's a, that's a red flag, actually. That's a warning sign. If you want somebody to be working on this on the side, that's very much like a VA. It's like it's not a full-time job. Whereas when you hire a community manager, you want them all in on you. You don't want them managing four other communities. Like you want them, like you want all of their awesomeness and their thought waves thinking about you and your membership. And that's generally why I recommend hiring a community manager for a minimum of 20 hours a week. 20 and up. Okay, so when, for example, when I was managing Ramit Sethi's Accelerator membership, the coaching membership, um, I was doing 30 hours a week. Now, let's be real. Many weeks I was doing more than that because I was drinking the Kool-Aid and I loved it and I wanted to make it amazing. And this is the thing. You want somebody like that who's at bat for your membership. Now, I'm not condoning overworking. So this is a really good point. As a, as a membership owner, it's your responsibility to really lay down the law and say, hey, I'm paying you for 20 hours a week. I want you doing 20. Okay, so don't take advantage of people. But also it's the community manager's responsibility to set boundaries, right? You need boundaries so that it's like, hey, I don't work on the weekends or I'm, I'm done at five or whatever those boundaries are for them. Okay, it's a little side rant. I'm sorry. Let's get back to those mistakes. Number two. <laughs> expecting them to magically do 50 things without experience or training. WTF, guys. Like, giving somebody a list of things and just being like, here, go go do that and just expecting them to do it perfectly is a recipe for failure. They're going to feel like shit because they're like, oh, I should, I, sh- I should know how to do this and I don't know how to do this. And you're going to be frustrated because they're going to be doing stuff wrong or they're going to be asking you a lot of questions. So this is actually a little bit of like onboarding them. So we talk about onboarding for your memberships. You need to onboard your team members, people. So like maybe like taking the time to explain how things work, walk through the processes with them. And this is the thing. Normally, you're the one that's been doing everything yourself. So you know how it works. And then you're passing this on to them. You're passing the baton, right? Well, one of the best ways to pass the baton, record yourself, like a video of yourself doing the thing and then send them that video and say, here's me doing what I'd like you to do. Please start doing this. And if you have any questions, just ask me. And so then you can get rid of the questions in the first couple weeks. This is another thing as well. Let's just be real. This applies to having a VA or even like a new community manager. 
there is a learning curve, right? There is a period of time where you may be thinking, oh my God, I'm having to answer all these questions. I'm having to explain all this stuff. This is more work. I should just do it myself. No, don't do that. They're learning the ropes. Give them some time, right? And this, this is also a really good point though. This is where training comes in. So for example, when I work with clients, I'm training the community manager. So we do six weeks of live trainings, but then it's also like providing that community manager, empowering them to have a point of contact that knows what she's talking about, but also is not judging. Like there's this safe space where they can say, oh my God, I don't know how to handle this problem. Or what should I do in this situation? Or how can I improve my schedule? Because I feel like I just can't get my hours down to what I'm being paid for. Okay. So just know that you need to give them some time and space to learn what they're doing. So don't just throw like 50 things. Here's your list and throw it and expect them to, to be amazing. It's just not fair. Okay. So that's mistake number two. Number three. All right. Oh God. Underestimating the time it takes to scroll or review a community. This is one of the biggest issues that a lot of people have. So a lot of membership owners, they assume that, oh, you can just review the community really quickly. You could do that in say 15, 20 minutes a day. And so then when somebody comes back and maybe reporting back saying, okay, it's taking me much longer. It's maybe taking me an hour or more. You have to remember that it's not just scanning. You're not just scrolling, right? You're scrolling and reading. You're assessing if posts are appropriate or inappropriate. If they're inappropriate, then you have to use, you have to think, okay, how do I handle this? What's the best way to handle this? And what are all the options for handling it? Then you're going a step further and you're thinking, okay, if I handle it this way, what potentially could go wrong or what's the best outcome, right? Or is this going to make more work for myself or my boss or the other team members? Also, what is the user experience for the member? So all at the same time, you're scrolling and stopping and you're doing all of these in-depth thoughts or you should be. Okay, this is a good point. If somebody is just scanning a community in 10 minutes, they're not really doing the work. Let's be real. That's just my little disclaimer. So you, you have to really understand how much time community management takes. And this is a really good point. So if you are paying somebody in, ter- in, in terms of hours, like you need to be realistic in what those hours will actually get you. So if you think about it, if somebody's working two hours a day, Monday to Friday, that's 10 hours, two hours a day, Monday to Friday, what can you realistically get done in two hours? They're going to have to be scrolling and checking the community. I would recommend that they're doing that twice in a day. So maybe it's half an hour, half an hour. So that's an hour gone. Then maybe you have them pulling testimonials. Maybe you have them connecting members. This is all part of the scrolling, but it does take time to be writing the, the messages and thinking. It's a lot of thought and it's also quite exhausting. It's mentally taxing. Maybe you have them creating events, posting updates, writing content, all these different things. And you have to be realistic about how long the creative process takes right? So if you are thinking, oh, I'm just going to, you know, hire somebody and it'll be, you know, like an hour a day, like five hours a week. That's not realistic. I'm just bursting the bubble a little bit here. Okay. So that's a really big mistake. I'm like rubbing the, sorry. Um, that's a really big mistake. Have realistic expectations. People are not superhuman. Okay. So for example, if you're thinking of hiring a community manager, minimum, I mean, if it's a big group, so I would say over, you know, like a couple hundred people or more, like you're going to need like probably like 10 to 12. I would recommend 20. If it's like an established group and you need them doing, actually, that's a really good point. Like what do they even do? That's another video, my friends. What do community managers even do? All the different tasks. If you'd like that list, let me know in the comments because that would be interesting. It would be interesting for me. So maybe it'll be interesting for you. Okay, just understand the amount of time that it takes and be realistic because this is the the thing that actually is very frustrating that I've seen so many times is that, you know, you hire somebody, imagine it's 20 hours a week, but you start giving them tasks, you give them more con, like more things that they're responsible for. And it's, it's unlikely that they're going to get it done in even like 30 hours, but 
but you're, it's like almost wanting, no, 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 like 20 hours a week, but I want you to do all this extra stuff. You will lose your community manager if you keep putting extra things on their, their list and expecting them to do it in the same amount of time, because there's always something you have to cut something. And so your community manager, nine times out of 10, what will happen is that they'll start, um, you know, doing like writing content, um, events, all these different things. And it's the engagement in the community that suffers. So it's the creative process of thinking, how can I connect these people? Let me look at the the community and organically find some ways for them to connect. That's what gets cut first. And that really hurts a community. So be very careful. Have reasonable expectations on how much work you're giving them and how much time that you're allowing them to get it done in. Okay? That was number three. Number four. Oh, gosh, yeah. Hiring somebody who can't write or has a poor understanding of written English. If somebody cannot read a message and interpret it, so this is the thing, it might be, um, it might just be somebody's understanding of the situation. It also might be if English is a second language. So I was an ESL teacher. If you've got a master, like if you're, you've mastered the English language, awesome. But if you struggle to understand nuances in the way people write, in questions they ask or tone, that can be really dangerous because you might reply in a way that's really, really hurtful or dismissive, a little bit too abrupt or too hard for that person. And they're going to feel unsupported. They're going to feel like, what? These people don't care about me. So it's really, really important that when you're looking for somebody to to manage your community that they can write, I've talked about this so much in previous videos as well, they have to be able to write and express themselves and be emotive and just have really strong writing skills, but also just strong like language skills. So for example, obviously I'm speaking in English, so I'm assuming that your your membership is in English, but if it's in a different language, you need to make sure that they're strong with whatever that language is because it really does create problems. Because imagine you have a community manager, they don't interpret something properly and they jump in and they answer a question. Maybe they provide like the wrong answer and it's very clear that they didn't understand the question. Suddenly you or another team member has to jump in and like compensate for that person. It creates a lot of stress for other team members and it's, it wastes a lot of time as well. So this is the thing. You want to make sure that the person that you bring on as your community manager has a very strong mastery of the English language who's very creative in terms of writing. So for example, English majors are, see, I've noticed this is a theory that I'm working on myself, so don't quote me on it, but English majors feel like really good candidates to be community managers. The, the writing, the interpretation, the creativity lends really well to it. I was an English major, by the way. So... There you have it. Those are four mistakes that you're going to want to avoid when hiring a community manager. But also the main idea of the day is that a VA is not a community manager. If you have a unicorn VA, they can definitely be groomed and trained to turn into a community manager. But this assumption that, oh, my community, the management engagement can just be like put, you know, I'll just give my VA a list. That's a very poor decision. Okay. It's not a good decision. It's not good for you. It's not good for your members. And it's not good for that person either because they're going to be thrown in and they're going to be like in over their heads. Okay. So that is it for this week. Oh, wait, let me check. I'll organize now, guys. So what's happening next week? Wait a second. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so next week, hmm, this is a controversial one, you guys. So it's near and dear to my heart, but it's basically talking about free Facebook groups and how I hate them, and, except for one type, okay? So if you are looking to harness the power of community to grow your membership and maybe you're having a launch and you're thinking, okay, how can I, how can I gather some people together so that I can move people into my launch and, and welcome some new members into my membership? There's only one type of free Facebook group that I would even recommend or touch with a nine foot pole. Um, and we're going to be talking about that next week. Looking forward to it. If you would like to get updates. So first of all, subscribe in land of YouTube. If you're digging what I'm dropping, 
digging what I'm putting down um, and you want to watch future videos, be sure to subscribe, set notifications, all that jazz. But also come on over to dianatower.com and sign up for email updates. This is where I jam behind the scenes and I share a little bit more insight, a little bit more tips and constructive advice on assessing hiring and training community managers for your memberships. Okay, so come on over, dinatower.com, and uh, cannot wait till next week. All right, and until then, I love this shirt. Community.